Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comments section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, <clears throat> y'all are my babies, excuse me. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all are having a wonderful 2022 so far. We are just now getting into it. I hope you all brought in the new year with a bang. Me and my family definitely did. If you're following me over on my Instagram, then you saw that as we were like cheersing and saying happy new years, uh, the fireworks started going off behind us and we had no idea that they were gonna be that close. It was super cool. So I hope you guys had a great new year. And as you guys can see, here's Jasper right here, just wishing he could get into that fish tank for a second. He's getting really big, you guys, look. He's a big boy, oh my goodness. Oh, you're such a sweet boy. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about Kim Kardashian and Nicki Minaj and Offset's uh, manager. Now, their manager disappeared on December 22nd. She was reported missing and the next day she was found in a very unexpected location. Before we go any further, I did want to stop and thank today's sponsor, Scentbird. Scentbird, thank you so much for sponsoring today's video. Scentbird is a monthly subscription service. Now, Scentbird sells many different types of things. They have perfume, beauty products, skincare, but their perfume subscription is my absolute favorite. So every month you get to choose from over 600 different brands and choose perfumes that you would like to try. This month I'm going to share some of the scents that I got and the first one that I got is the Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. Now I actually have this scent right here but I kind of wanted to cheat the system a little bit, not really cheating, and get my grandmother this scent because it is a light airy scent it smells very good i know it very 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 well and my grandmother only wears white diamonds okay she's been wearing white diamonds since forever and a day and i'm trying to get her out the box and so i felt like by getting her a couple little scent bird perfumes she could do just that the next scent that i got is this Flores London, and this is supposed to have a jasmine smell, and I love jasmine, so we're gonna see. I'm gonna be the judge of that. This is a very unique smell. It does, I can smell the jasmine in there. It's very girly, but it also has a, a bit of a masculine undertone. A lot of women are wearing the more masculine scents nowadays. And the last scent that we're gonna be trying today is this Mewy Mewy. <laughs> I wanted to try something completely different that I'd never tried before. This is supposed to have a flowery scent, but also a wood scent. It smells like I would want that to be my candle scent, but I don't know if I would want to wear that. I definitely want my house smelling like that. If you want to try Scentbird, all you gotta do is go to scentbird.com and use my code right here, CHR4, and you will save 55% today. Scentbird is now fulfilling subscriptions in the US and in Canada. So again, just use my code CHR4 and you will save 55% off of your first Scentbird subscription today. Thanks again, Scentbird. Now, when I first heard about this story, I was a bit confused because I thought the Kardashian Jenner's manager was Kris Jenner. And I do believe, obviously, she is still the momager or the manager, but there is a woman named Angela Kowalski, who had some ties to the Kardashians and the Jenners as a manager as well. Now, from what I could find, she managed like financial aspects of things and she was a manager to a bunch of high profile people. Like I said, Offset, Nicki Minaj. She actually, Angela uh, has managed Tupac's estate. If you guys don't know who Tupac is, 
you may be a youngin, <laughs> but all of my older school people definitely know who Tupac is, and I didn't even know he still had an estate to be managed, but nevertheless, Angela um, managed his, his estate as well. Angela, who was a 55-year-old woman who was very well-loved and respected in the industry, again, was reported missing on December 22nd of 2021. Now, it's not clear yet who reported her missing, but if I had to guess, I would think it would be one of her five children because she had five children. Now, Angela lived in LA, right in the heart of everything, right around all of her clients. And yeah, it was just very involved in the Hollywood industry. Now on December 23rd, just the very next day after she was reported missing, her car was found. Her car was found in the 1500 block of Patricia Avenue in Semi Valley. And as her car began to be inspected, the people that were looking inside of it were shocked to find Angela's body stuffed in the trunk of her car. Now, as her body was taken off, the medical examiner would say that she had blunt force trauma to the head and to the neck, and there was also signs of strangulation. So as of now, the cause of death is blunt force trauma with a sharp object, and strangulation so i don't think it's been long enough or they've released a detailed autopsy yet but that so far is what we know now not long after that angela's 49 year old boyfriend named jason barker was arrested now jason was arrested for suspicion of murder and later on, the DA would add more charges, but they arrested him immediately. Detectives allege that Jason murdered Angela in her home, then carried her lifeless body out, stuffed it in the trunk of her own car, then drove to the 1500 block of Patricia Avenue and abandoned her car there. After Jason was booked in the jail in LA, the DA added charges of torture as well as murder. Times reported that there was a firearm used as well as a knife and then also the strangulation. And so the torture charges is what really gets me because the charge of murder was with a tent of malice, but the torture charge was with intent to cause cruel and extreme pain and suffering purpose of revenge, extortion, persuasion, and for sadistic purposes, and to inflict great bodily injury. So I am so curious what they found to be able to tie those charges that quickly to Jason, her boyfriend or ex-boyfriend at the time. And I'm wondering if they found text messages. Now we don't know yet, this all just happened within a couple weeks ago and he hasn't gone to trial yet. He is allegedly, as of me filming this right now, still in the jail. He's in the jail on a $3 million bond. Originally when they arrested him, his bond was only 2 million. And then when he went to his for first court appearance, Whatever evidence they found in between that period of time made the judge up his bond from 2 million to 3 million. And this is just so sad to hear about. First of all, obviously 55 year old woman with five children that obviously loved their mother, okay? Many people just in the industry that we know about. Now she lived, a very, Angela lived a very private life, which is to be expected when you are managing these high profile, you know, celebrities. So the charge says with extortion and to, you know, revenge and torture and sadistic. What did they find? Was he texting her, you know, trying to get money out of her? What, what, what happened? And I just feel so bad for her children, her five children, who are probably grown, if I had to guess, with her being 55. But whether they were grown or whether they were like actually still under the age of 18 children, this is so hurtful and sad. I feel bad for her. And then also, just the fact that it was her boyfriend, you know, or ex-boyfriend. It's It seems, you know, nine times out of 10, it's somebody that you know and trust that hurts hurts people you know what i mean it's it's somebody very close to them and you know a lot of us are married like you know are you sleeping in the bed every night with somebody that's later gonna hurt you are you is it your child that's going to you know is it your person that you think is your best friend you know that is going to come at you in these types of ways you just don't know who to trust now, another thing that disturbs me about this case is that Angela's ex-boyfriend, the one that has been arrested for her murder and torture, 
His social media looks a lot like these other cases that we hear like Chris Watts. Pictures of him being a doting father, loving his children, smiling, just looking like a great man, right? Or you, there's pictures of him with his ex-wife and his daughter, allegedly, and his mother with his arms around them, just smiling. His ex-wife was actually approached by the media and asking her, and she said, listen, we've been divorced since 2017, and I have no other comment. And I, I mean, I don't know, you guys, it's just... You know, if you think like nowadays, right, if somebody's in the dating scene, okay, I have friends that are still single and still dating, The one of the first things that they do is they go and check their social media. They look at the pictures to see what kind of life they're living. I mean, are the pictures they're posting on social media of them like using substances or getting into bar fights, or is it of them with their children smiling and hugging their children, right, to give them those warm fuzzies? But at the end of the day, you still don't know. Like, I don't know, you guys. It's just very disturbing. There's also a lot of rumors going around right now, and I felt like I should just mention this because a lot of y'all were DMing me this about this, but about the Kardashian curse. Now, you got to admit, it's some weird stuff that goes on around the Kardashians. I mean, we just saw the Travis Scott situation, right? We, we've seen a lot of things happen, a lot of failed relationships after failed relationships, but I think it would be very disrespectful to Angela and her children to chuck this up as a Kardashian curse. You're like, no. Angela obviously trusted a man who wooed her at some point, told her he loved her, made her feel comfortable enough, and then he flipped on her, allegedly. So yes, this is a story of that. I am going to be following this. This is so, it's just so sad. I'm going to see what happens with this. Um, and also sad for Jason's children as well, because they're innocent in this. And now their father is sitting in jail on a $3 million bond being accused of killing his 55 year old girlfriend. So what do you guys think? Have you heard about this? Do you think the Kardashian curse has anything to do with it? Do you think that, man, it's just wild, man, about how it's like, it's always somebody you trust. I think we've all been there before, right? Maybe a couple times, maybe not there to the extent of having your life taken, but we've all trusted people in our lives that we loved and we thought it was gonna be one thing and then it ended up being something totally different. So yeah, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Other than that, you guys, I will see y'all on Friday for our uh, true crime story time of the week. Thank you guys all so much for being here. Please do not forget to like this video. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. Love you guys. Bye.